Okay, I'm going to kick off today. Welcome to the 2020 Quizlet Unconference. We are so excited to have over 18,000 teachers register this event. Um, over the next two days, we hope to leave teachers feeling unstoppable and ready to teach and overcome any challenge that comes in this uncertain time. And at the end of the day, we at Quizlet know how talented and resilient teachers are. My name is Chad Myros, and I'm here uh, representing the marketing team. And I'll also be your host for the unconference. So you'll see me in the various sessions. I'll also be moderating the Q&A in various sessions. And I'm also hosting the Quizlet 101 and introduction section. We have a great agenda planned for you today and tomorrow. And we hope you're just as excited as we are. The day one agenda includes a welcome to the 2020 unconference from our CEO, uh, Matt Glotzbach. We have quiz out bre Quizlet breakout sessions with Quizlet 101 and in introduction. Quizlet 201, Advanced Content Creation, Creating, Finding, and Discovering the Best Content on Quizlet. We then have a session from a teacher entitled Accessibility Support for All Students They're Using Quizlet. We'll then hear from Derek DeBossi and Experience, Expectations, and Exploration in Virtual Learning. We'll have a roundtable discussion with our product managers uh, entitled What's Next for Teachers. We'll give everyone a lunch break. We understand that Zoom fatigue is real. We don't want teachers to be online and on a screen all day. We'll come back and we'll hear from two of our product service, uh, product specialists on the benefits of Quizlet Teacher. We'll then hear about classes, folders, and progress. And then we'll have breakout sessions for individual subject areas. We have English with Dr. Jessica Pilgreen, math with Rory Yakubov, music with Marissa Terranova, language with Silvino Di Bernardo, and a session from a higher ed teacher going through how she uses Quizlet in her higher ed classroom. We'll end the day uh, with concluding remarks and giving a sneak peek into what day two of the Quizlet Unconference looks like. And also, um, Jose Gallegos from the marketing team will share opportunities for teachers to participate with Quizlet. And so without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to our CEO, Matt Glossback. And if you'll notice on the bottom of the webinar, there's a Q&A uh, question submission. You can submit questions that I will then read to Matt at the end of his presentation. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to Matt. Excellent. Thank you very much, Chad. And uh, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending on what time zone you're joining us from. I'm in... Uh, I was going to say sunny California, but it's a little overcast today. Um, my name is Matt Glotzbach, and as Chad said, I'm the CEO of Quizlet. Um, I'm really excited to welcome you all uh, today to our fourth annual Teacher Unconference. Um, we started this conference as a way to really bring educators together to provide guidance and insights on education technology in general and obviously Quizlet in particular. And as I mentioned, this is our fourth year of hosting this conference. Uh, when, we, when we kicked it off uh, a few years back and we decided to make it a fully virtual conference, we, didn't, uh, we thought we were doing that out of uh, convenience for everyone. Little did we know uh, today it would be a necessity or a requirement as opposed to uh, getting together in person. Um, but I'm really excited to see how this event has grown over the years. This year, you're joining a community of over 18,000 people that are registered and attending this conference, which is just, uh, which is just amazing. And we're, we're seeing those numbers grow. Even as of five minutes ago, we were getting new registrations, which I think speaks to not only the importance of technology and the role that it's playing in education and learning, which I'll touch on, but it also speaks to the time that we find ourselves in, uh, in terms of in education, really looking for ways to help address the needs of, of students and learners globally uh, through this pandemic and through these challenging times. As, uh, as Chad just mentioned, he and the team have put together a really wonderful agenda over the next few days. You'll not only be hearing from members of our team, but on how to use our best utilize our products and what's new and upcoming and all of those great things. But we're also really focused on sharing best practices from our friends, our partners, 
from your colleagues in the community. Because as educators, you know that the foundation of education and learning is that sharing. I think that's probably one of the most um, you know, heartwarming and wonderful aspects about the field of education is that uh, I've never seen people more eager to share what they know uh, than educators because we recognize we're all working for uh, towards a common good. Now, you know, as we kick off this session, you know, the role that technology can play in helping students has always been very powerful, but it's even more critical in these somewhat challenging and, and really uncertain times. But I want to caveat all that. So for the next two days, we're going to be talking a lot about technology and the role that technology plays. But I want to start by reminding us something that you all know, but oftentimes I think we forget in the popular press and in the conversation about where education is and where education is going, that technology is simply a tool. And it's you, the teachers and educators, you're the superheroes that really make education happen. You know, teachers and educators are the real silver bullet here. Um, and again, this is something I'm sure that you all know, but I really want to reiterate that although technology can be powerful, it's, a, it's just a tool, a powerful tool, but a tool nonetheless, and it's only really useful and it can only really help foster and forward the mission of education when it's wielded by an experienced educator. Now, we've seen with the impacts of the pandemic and the sudden shift in the spring to remote learning that it's you our teachers who truly make the difference um, i'm sure a number of you have seen the report out and some of you are probably from the the la unified school district where unfortunately as we move to remote and online learning nearly 40 percent of students didn't log on didn't engage. And I heard countless stories and even experienced some personally of teachers who went, reached out individual to individual students, went literally door to door in a safe, masked, socially distanced way to reconnect with those students. So we know that it's only through the work of teachers that we can truly reach students in forward education. And that's always been true, but I think it's even more true and even more critical in this current time that we're experiencing. And so before we get too far into it, I wanna say a big thank you to all of you, our educators, administrators, and staff that work so hard every day to make education happen. You know, these past six months have been extremely challenging for everyone, but especially to you, our educators, who've had to reinvent your practice, adopt a whole new set of tools, spend extra time and extra energy uh, to go out of your way to really reach those students, while also juggling all of your life commitments, your children, your families as caregivers, etc. And it's through your personal efforts and your long hours, your dedication and commitment to your students that really made the difference in helping us move learning forward. Now, I'd love to tell you that as you all look to return to the school and, and, and to, uh, to education in the next few weeks that we'd snap our fingers and everything's gonna go back to normal. But unfortunately, we know that that's not true. And so, the next few months or perhaps the next few quarters are going to continue to be challenging. And speaking personally, and then as also a representative of Quizlet, again, we just wanna say a big thank you and that we're here for you and we're here to help support you in these challenging times. I wanted to highlight a few of the things that our team did uh, in the spring and that we're going to continue to invest and focus in in the fall of really helping teachers uh, with these new circumstances. Uh, we were so inspired by all of the creative ways in which teachers were engaging their students 
And so if you're not aware, uh, hopefully you, you will be as a result of this, if we put together a set of distance and remote learning resources, uh, this is on our website. And it's a compilation of numerous tips and recommendations from you, the millions of teachers who use the Quizlet platform to help others with distance learning and teaching needs. And I think that's, a, that's really a hallmark of, of how we think about this is you're the experts in the field. And so our job is to work with you and look across all of the great things that educators are doing globally and bring them together and synthesize them and make them available to you in easy to access and easy to consume ways. The other thing I wanna mention, and I think there's a whole session on this, but uh, we, we did some quick work to transform Quizlet Live. One of the first things we heard from teachers was, we love Quizlet Live as a way to engage our students, but it's really hard over this Zoom uh, remote, you know, Google, uh, Google Meet environment. And so we quickly built a Quizlet Live individuals mode so that you can still engage your students remotely and play that, uh, that really fun and engaging and educational game uh, to, to collaborate. Uh, and so hope you've had a chance to take a look at that. There's a session where we'll talk more about Quizlet Live and you can, uh, you can I think, play a game as, uh, as Chad, Chad mentioned, we're going we're gonna to do with, uh, with the audience and then, uh, and then also you can learn how to use it. And I also want to say again a thank you for all the amazing work that uh, you do with Quizlet. Quizlet was listed by several trusted organizations as a top learning tool during this time of distance learning, including UNESCO, uh, which we felt proud to be, uh, to be a part of those trusted resources. So what does the future of education look like? I would love to say I know. Um, but it's really hard to say. Uh, what I do know is that no matter whether we're back in a traditional physical classroom, whether we're working remotely with technology, whether we're in some hybrid, and we could talk at length about what we speculate the long-term future is going to, how the long-term future is going to evolve. What I do know is that you as teachers and educators will be at the center of that experience. You'll be guiding that learning. And I believe that there's an opportunity to continue to empower educators even more with technology to help in that guidance. But again, I wanna stress that it's not replacing the teacher or replacing the educator. It's giving you tools to scale up your impact, to reach students, to connect with students. I think one of the things that I've learned as a parent of two, uh, of two daughters uh, over, the last, uh, over the last six months is that connection and that engagement, both with the community of students, because learning is collaborative, but especially with the educators, with their teachers, is so critical. And that's really the thing that is, is as we look towards the fall, is probably one of the largest challenges of how do we strengthen and deepen that connection that educators have with students. So I don't know what, uh, what the future holds. I don't have a crystal ball to tell you exactly what education is going to look like, but what I can guarantee and what I know is that teachers will be at the center of education um, in, in perpetuity. And no matter what that future looks like, we here at Quizlet, I believe share the same goals that you do. We're all here to help students learn. Our mission at Quizlet is to help people practice and master whatever they're learning. And as educators, your mission is to help your students learn and achieve their learning goals. And our goal is to be, as a company, is to really be a tool and a platform that helps you in that mission to empower you to make your students unstoppable. So it seems pretty straightforward, right? Unfortunately, as you know, as experienced educators, it's just not quite that easy because what we've seen in the nearly 15 years at Quizlet is that students really struggle with how to learn, not just what to learn, but how to learn, how to study. And in this information age where there's so much to know, there's so much information flying at you, 
one of the keys at really helping and empowering students and making them unstoppable is teaching them how to study and how to learn. And so as we look towards the future at Quizlet, that's really one of our key goals is how can we continue to build our study tools to really empower and help solve some of the common pitfalls that students have. As I said, you know, the research shows and we spend a lot of time both working with teachers and students, but also looking at uh, the, the literature and the research in education in cognitive science learners just don't know how to study effectively. There's a number of proven things that work and things that don't work. And unfortunately, most students aren't aware of that reality. They don't know what activities to do and what things are, are good in terms of a use of their time and what things aren't. You know, we, we often, talk internally that so much of the great knowledge and science through research is still really trapped in the lab and it hasn't been brought out in really simple and consumable ways. And so at Quizlet, one of our primary goals is how do we take that knowledge of how students can learn best and how students can study best and get it out to them. You know, we see time and time again, and I'm sure you do as well, that learners waste time. They spend hours and hours on low impact study activities. Uh, one of my favorite examples is highlighting. Uh, for those of you that are uh, university professors or maybe even, uh, even high school, you know, later high school students, you'll see that students will take their textbook and they'll highlight or they'll take their notes and they'll highlight. But, and they think that as they're re reviewing that information, that's actually helping them, them learn. But the research has shown time and time again that that's a really low utility activity. It doesn't lead to actually understanding the information. And it doesn't even lead to good memorization of the information. Uh, it's just not an effective technique. Yet, if you think about back to school supplies, highlighters are still, or virtual highlighters these days, are still one of the most common purchased items. Another challenge that we see and especially during this time of remote learning and the pandemic, is students get stuck. They, they find it hard to understand a key concept or problem. No matter how many ways they look at it, they just don't quite get it. They're looking for help in identifying, well, what are the root issues? What are the core concepts? How would I, you know, I'm not getting this. How would I explain it in an alternate way? How do I effectively work through this problem? And again, this is one of, this is a common challenge in teaching and learning, but even more so when everyone's showing up as a two by two square on a, on a you know, a Brady Bunch game board of, uh, of video lectures or, uh, or video courses, it's even harder for you as the educator to know that a student is stuck. You know, how do you get those signals? Well, traditionally, you see it. You see the student in the class who is drifting off and has lost focus. You see the student who's got that quizzical look and says, you know, kind of, they're thinking to themselves but haven't quite yet raised their hand and say, I get it. And so how can technology help when a student gets stuck? How can we identify that a student is stuck? And then how can we help direct them to the resources they need to get unstuck? And then last, but probably most importantly, is that we see that students lose motivation. There's so much to learn. And school often feels like a marathon. Will I ever get to the finish line? How can I stay focused and push away all the distractions out there? How do I get to the finish line? Where is the finish line? Again, I may sound like a broken record, but this is a problem pre-pandemic that's just amplified by the current situation. It's hard when you've got so many distractions, when you're in an environment that isn't necessarily the most conducive to focus and learning. 
you're on a device which has so many distractions that want to pull you away just for a second to look at the latest TikTok or just for a minute to see what your friends are doing on Snapchat. How do we help students stay focused and stay motivated? How do we give them that ongoing encouragement? How do we in create incentives and how do we challenge them? just like someone that's training for or running a race. So those are some of the common challenges and opportunities we have, both as educators as well as a technology platform to help address those challenges in learning. And you know, a great solution that some of you may be familiar with is, wouldn't it be amazing if we could give each student an individual coach? Right? Imagine if you only had one student this fall semester, one individual to work with, to shepherd along the way, to help them when they're stuck, to guide them in their study, to help keep them motivated, to encourage them to take breaks, to set higher goals, to push them a little bit further. Imagine how powerful that would be, but that's just not the reality. You have 30 students, you have 50 students, you have 200 students. And you can't necessarily spend that level of individual time and attention. You know, in the past, in education circles, people have talked about personalized learning, specifically with respect to technology. And I think that's a misnomer because teachers have been doing personalized learning since the dawn of education. It's called looking in their eyes, understanding where their challenges are, meeting them where they are, providing them individual guidance. But in these times in general, and with pan the pandemic in particular, that's becoming more and more difficult. The graph that you see on the slide is from a study from many years ago um, called the, if, again, some of you are probably familiar with Bloom's famous uh, Two Sigma finding, which basically says in a nutshell, if you can take conventional classroom-based education and augment it with this one-on-one -on -one tutoring, you can see a two sigma increase in test scores. Um, so you can actually have a really significant impact on, uh, on those students. But the challenge is that's just not practical. We can't necessarily give every learner on the planet an individual personalized human teacher, or human tutor to help guide their, uh, their, their, their learning and their education. But what if we could use technology to help, not to replace the teacher by any stretch, but as another tool to give the teacher some of that more individualized attention towards each student, to help them when they're stuck, to help, them gu to help guide them. How would we do that? What would that look like? Well, that's a big focus for us at Quizlet, is how do we provide students with those tools to be more effective studiers? And there's really a few key simple concepts that we're focused on. Number one is how do we work in concert with educators to help students set goals? The research and the literature is clear. When students know where they're going and they have a goal for their learning, they're much more likely to achieve it. It helps them think about what the end state looks like. It helps them scope and understand what work is required. And so how do we create a way, a lightweight way, to allow students to express their learning goals so that we can intervene and help them achieve those goals? The second that goes hand in hand with goal setting is tracking progress. If you think back a few slides with that image of a, of a, of a marathoner that's, uh, that's kind of searching for the finish line, imagine if you were running a race and you didn't know how far it was, you didn't know how long you had to go, so you didn't know what the goal was, but more importantly, you didn't know where you were against that. Am I at mile six or am I at mile 25? Do I have 10 minutes left or do I have two hours left? It's so critical to track progress so that students know where they are and we can help motivate them and keep them going in the right direction. We can help, ident help them identify what's working and what's not working 
And in doing so, with these two ideas of setting goals and tracking progress, we're really empowering students to build those great study habits that we know will help them through their educational career and throughout life. And then next is with a goal set and progress of where we are, how do we actually guide that study time? I can't tell you how many times I've seen students in one-on-one -on -one interviews and in group settings uh, spend time on things they already know. And again, there's research that, that uh, supports this. It feels good. Uh, when you're working on things that you've already mastered, you feel a sense of accomplishment, and that's great. But how do we really guide that studying? And how do we intervene when a student is stuck? How do we help them uh, understand, oh, I'm stuck here, I'm not getting this, and then how do we help guide where they go next? This is something that Quizlet's been working on for the last few years, and probably many of you are aware, and your students are definitely aware of Quizlet Learn, which is where we've started that guiding process of suggesting the right next question to ask, suggesting and guiding students on where they spend their time. And this is an area where we've put a lot of research and development and focused our data science efforts so that we continue to enhance that guiding hand. And our goal, admittedly, it's a long way out, but our goal is really to mimic the guidance that if you were there looking over their shoulder and could guide what they were going to go spend their time on next, that we can play that similar role, that we can help guide their focus and guide their study where they spend their time. And then last, but definitely not least, and really encompassing all of this, is practice. One of the things that's most concerning to me as we look across the data, and there's a great session, I believe it's in the agenda tomorrow, where we'll share some of the insights that we've gotten from uh, what's happened over the course of the spring from our data. We have such a large amount of data with over 50 million users using Quizlet every month, literally billion question, billion plus questions asked and answered every week. We can see the trends of who's doing the studying, who's putting in the time, who's not by subject, et cetera. And one of the more concerning things that I saw is as the education landscape shifted in the spring, we saw decreases in certain types of engagement and practice. And it's understandable. People's lives were disrupted. And also, the stakes changed. Right? Many of your classes went to pass-fail, which was probably appropriate given the circumstances. Many of the tests and assessment went to open book or open notes or lower stakes. But the, the unfortunate side effect of that is students just didn't put in as much of the time. And we all know that it takes repetition, it takes practice, it takes engagement. And so we can help students set goals, we can help them track their progress, we can help guide their study, and then we can create more and more engaging practice for them so that they can continue to engage in practice in smart ways to reach their study goals. And so as we look across the next six months and really the next few years, our goal is that Quizlet can continue to develop these core concepts and these core ideas in conjunction with you, the educators, and really be a learning assistant for our users, for students, and really help them develop those great study activities and study behaviors and, uh, and, and try to reach their goals. So, how do we do that? How do we make our learners unstoppable? Well, I think first and foremost, my ask of you is to really empower your students. Um, set high expectations for them, and if anything, raise your expectations of them, not lower them as we move into another disrupted uh, semester of education. But help really empower and, and show them that, that they're in control of their education and use technology as a tool to, to help do that. 
Number two is we'd ask that you really encourage, and I'd even go so far as to say require regular practice. You know, the time that you get with your students in the classroom is so valuable. And there's a forcing function to drive engagement because they're there. And I, I know some of you are probably chuckling. It's just because they show up in class doesn't mean they're engaged. I totally hear that. But the challenge is, is tenfold when you're not spending one-on-one -on -one in person time with them. And so by engaging them, by requiring, by creating opportunities for them to practice will really help drive those study behaviors. And last, but definitely not least, and I'd say if you take away one thing from the next two days, it would be this, and it's completely independent of Quizlet. Share what you know and what you learn. You know, I've talked to dozens of teachers over the last few months, and the, the thing that I hear constantly is, this is such a challenging time, I don't know what I should be doing. I don't know if I'm doing it right. I don't feel like I have all the support that I, that, I, that I need to be successful. But I constantly hear that the most trusted source of information and wisdom is from other educators. Because ultimately, we're all in this together. And so if you can share what you learn and what you know, share the best practices, share what's working, um, share them with your friends, share them with your colleagues, share them with parents, because parents are, uh, are, are trying to figure out how to be educators as well, and share them with us. Uh, we, like I said, we'll continue to play this role in the fall and ongoing of really trying to aggregate and collect these best practices and amplify them uh, so that we can filter through them and, and synthesize them and share them out with you. And so continue to be a great source of learning and knowledge, not just for your students, but, with, but, but for one another. And then last, before we move into questions, I just wanna say, again, a heartfelt thank you and let you know that we are here for you to help you in this journey. I know it's not going to be easy, but, uh, but together we can all get through this together and we'll come out the other side stronger uh, and if I had one hope uh, of the learning and the evolution that would happen as a result of this pandemic is that the world will finally recognize the importance of great teachers and great educators. I think teachers should be the most valued profession on the planet. I think they should be paid an infinite salary. I think school funding should be absolutely paramount and the top thing. And my hope is that through this pandemic, the silver lining is that we'll be able to continue to see educators and the role of educators in education elevated. There's a lot of work to make that happen, but I'm confident that together we can do that. So thank you again. I'm excited for you to join us over the next, uh, over the next two days. And with that, let me turn it back over to Chad and I think we're gonna take some questions. Great, thank you so much, Matt. Um... So I want to address really quick with the attend with our audience. Um, we're seeing that we had some issues with Zoom uh, locking some people out. So that will be fixed by our next session. So I do want to call that out. But um, if you weren't able to get in Zoom, hopefully you joined us on the Quizlet YouTube live stream. Um, check out our Twitter. It's at Quizlet and you can find the links for every session just in case uh, on Twitter. So Matt, some of the questions I pulled uh, from our audience, and if you haven't submitted any in the Q&A tool below or on the YouTube live chat, feel free to. We have a few minutes with Matt. Um, the first question we'll ask Matt is, last spring, my students experienced quote unquote system overload while on Quizlet due to the understandably high user volume. I instructed my students to complete work during off times like early morning hours. However, when given the opportunity, high school students will sleep until 1 p.m., three exclamation points. Was it prepared for the high volume of users for the fall? Yeah, thank you for the question. The short answer is yes. Um, so I'll, let me apologize if, if any of you or your students experienced any, uh, any Quizlet downtime. Uh, unfortunately, it does happen from time to time, but our, uh, our technology team has worked diligently over the summer to really bolster our technology infrastructure 
so that uh, so that we can serve all users all of the time. Uh, so yes, we've we've put a lot of uh, energy as well as uh, as well as money into uh, making sure that our platform is ready for the uh, for the scale and the volume of users that we expect to see as we go back to school this fall. And I'll also say, as a uh, as a parent of uh, of two teenage daughters, I can I can echo the three uh, the three exclamation points on uh, high school students sleeping till noon. Great. Next question, Matt. Quizlet is so fun. I love using it with my students. Have you ever considered adding more games to the platform? Yeah. Thanks for the question. Um, you know, I mentioned one of the things that we're really focused on is that engagement uh, of how do we keep students really engaged and games are one way of doing that and we have some popular games obviously Quizlet Live and Quizlet Live individual mode for for class based games uh, match and gravity uh, for, uh, for for kind of individual study games. Uh, so we, it is an area that we're continuously looking at of how, how could we build out some more high value education games. But the thing I'll tell you is it's very important to us that games are more than just fun, that they have real educational value, that they're not just empty calories. And so our real focus is, I'd say, on student engagement. Now, if that can take the form of a game, which will keep students engaged and keep them studying, that's great, uh, that as long as it has educational value. But we're also focused on, I'll say, gamifying and adding some of those gamification elements to the overall study experience to help drive that ongoing engagement, to help bring students back. Right. We can uh, we can we can steal some of the some of the best practices from some of the really popular gaming and social media uh, applications to help keep bringing students back and keep them engaged in their learning. So next question, Matt, I love that Quizlet is hosting this event for teachers. Question for the CEO of all of your teachers in your education. Who was your favorite teacher and why? Oh, no. Wow. That's a that's a great question. Um, I don't know if any of my my teachers or former teachers are uh, are on this. They may be. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna cheat a little and uh, and and give three answers because I think there's really as I think through my uh, my education there are different chapters. Uh, in in grade school, my second grade teacher uh, was just amazing. Uh, she was really tough. Uh, she was firm, but I think she uh, she really got me started and put me on the right track. Uh, in terms of uh, in terms of thinking about learning and the importance of learning and the importance of achievement, but also the the ability to fail and move forward. Um, in high school, I was fortunate enough to have uh, the same math teacher for three different levels of you know algebra two, trigon geometry, trigonometry, and calculus, uh, and she was amazing because she she loved what she did. Right? It was so clear that she had a passion and love for educating, and it was a genuine excitement, which in turn helped drive excitement in me. And I credit her for probably really helping me develop and understand my interest in, in technology and engineering, which eventually caused me to, uh, to go get an engineering degree. And then the last is a professor I had. He was actually a visiting professor that taught a design class uh, in, my, uh, in my mechanical engineering discipline. And he was great because he challenged us to really look at the world around us. We had, a, we had to, to keep a design notebook and, uh, and carry it around with us. And, and every class, we had class two times a week, he would give us an assignment of something to go observe and sketch. And it was things like, you know, go find as many door hinges as you can and, you know, no, draw a few of them, take some notes or, uh, or, or you know, go find something that helps uh, helps people with disabilities. Right? And it, he really created a different aspect of awareness for me around, uh, around engineering and, and what it meant to, uh, to learn about engineering. So sorry, that was a bit, of a, a bit of a long answer since I took some liberties and, and chose three instead of one. Well, Matt, I will share that a bunch of teachers are shouting you on saying thank you and agreeing with your story about teachers. Uh, Suzanne Watson said, Matt, that's hilarious. I had the same math teacher for three levels too. And he was great, but I was so sick of him by the time I got to that third year. Um, I now wonder, I've had several students for multiple years when I was a teacher, so maybe they were sick of me. Um, 
we're running short on time out, but I'll ask you the last question that just popped in. Uh, thank you for, thank you Quizit for supporting teachers and students in this crazy time of the coronavirus. Was it hard for the Quizlet company to transition into remote working? Uh, thank you for that. That's actually a great question. Um, from a from a just a pure day to day technology and doing our job standpoint, we're really fortunate that as a technology company, we're already very virtual and uh, and set up well for remote learning or sorry, remote learning remote working. Uh, so making that that transition of moving away from the office from a system standpoint and from a process standpoint wasn't too challenging. Uh, and we feel fortunate about that. The challenge for us, which I'm sure you can all uh, resonate with, is we have a very tight knit community and culture at Quizlet. Uh, and a lot of that is through our in-person interactions, right? I, I don't wanna say we take it for granted, but the office environment, we have three offices, one in San Francisco, one in Denver, and now a, a new office in London. Uh, the office environment helps foster that culture and foster that community. And I'd say the hardest thing for us was how do we continue to support that community, to, to grow that community, all of those individual kind of personal connection elements. And so we've, we've tried to get creative through using video conferencing for just hanging out and eating lunch with one another to virtual, you know, virtual game nights and virtual events. Um, but, uh, but I'd say that's been, the, that's been the biggest challenge. I feel like we've risen to the challenge and done a good job of it. But um, you know, really keeping that human connection when you're spending all of your time sitting looking at, uh, at a video screen has been, has been a little bit more challenging, but, uh, but we're continuing to work through that. Great, well, thank you so much, Matt. Thank you for taking time to open up the Quiz and Unconference. For all of our teachers out there, thank you for hanging in there with us during this session as we uh, solve some of the Zoom issues. Again, in for the further sessions, if Zoom locks you out, you can go to Twitter. You don't need a Twitter account and you can access all session links on our YouTube live stream. But we promise you that it should be solved by our next Quizlet breakout sessions, which are Quizlet 101 and intro and Quizlet 201 advanced content creation. So thank you teachers. I look forward to an exciting day. Thank you, Matt. And see everybody in the next seven minutes. Enjoy non-screen time. Thanks everyone.